Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's news with post-apocalyptic media. I'm Derek, and this is Sean. How you doing? And Stephanie. Hello. We are going to be covering the weekly news every week. We're recording, we're publishing on Fridays, so if you want to subscribe to this podcast, uh, then that's when you can expect new episodes. We write for postapocalypticmedia.com, and we keep track of what's going on in this genre, whether it be games, movies, TV shows, um, sometimes books, and, uh, and everything in between, events. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, then, uh, then definitely give us a subscribe. And oh, by the way, if you, if you like what you hear, please leave a review. We're brand new, we're a baby. And um, we'd, like to, we'd like to hear back for at least some feedback. If you don't like it, you know what? The system is set up to where you can also voice your opinion. And, um, and who am I to say you don't have the right to do that? So uh, let us know. But uh, apparently Apple Podcast is the one that, that matters a lot, the most. I don't know. This is what people tell me. I don't know the, the truth of this. <laughs> so anyways, enough pontificating about podcast and SEO. That's not what this is about. <laughs> this is about post-apocalyptic media, and there has been a lot going on in the last week. Um, we each have something important uh, the, that we kind of pick out to discuss, sometimes multiple things. But um, I'm just going to go ahead and drop something here at the top because it is a short and sweet bit of news. And that is, if you thought you knew what was going on with Resident Evil, you don't. You don't, if you just, just listen to this show. We, re we covered that there is a Resident Evil TV series in production currently. Uh, very excited about that. But that is not all of the news that is um, coming out about Resident Evil. Uh, and I'm not talking about game news. There is also a movie in the works. Didn't they yes. do that already? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Another movie. How Another. many movies? Take a wild <laughs> guess, guys. How many Resident Evil movies are there at this moment? Seven? I was going to guess six. I, um, I, if I'd have prepared, I would know the answer. <laughs> I think the answer <laughs> is prepared. six, but I'm not positive about it. You know what? It could be seven at this point. Uh, there was the Battleship one. The uh, <laughs> they kind of started to blend in there, together there at the end. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not that I didn't enjoy them; I enjoyed most of them. Um, the battleship one just didn't do it for me, but all the rest I enjoyed for different reasons. Mm. There is a new movie coming out, and it is not like the others. So, uh, if you were, if if I think I think if you're a game fan, you may like this storyline a little bit more than than the way that the other series. Uh, developed so um, so that's the word from my from my Resident Evil uh, friends. They have great casting. Steph, you have a comment? Nope. Just think it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so yeah, a lot of the cast you're going to recognize them. They're rebooting it. They're starting over. I as my is my understanding. Is that your understanding as well, Sean? Yeah, I I think that um, I don't know if they're where they're going exactly, I haven't read about the uh, the plot um, as far as in relation to the other ones. Is that something, are they, is it like a b prequel or before, after? I feel like I want to say maybe origin, but mm. I don't know for certain. Oh, so you're saying that this movie is can I had, I had maybe misunderstood and thought that they were rebooting, like. Oh, the whole, oh, okay. Oh. But, um, you know, Stephanie, you posted that link. I did. And now I'm, let's see. I mean, people were really excited about the cast. But, um, but yeah, it's been, there's been so much news. All right. <laughs> it's in, like I can't even keep up. In related news, actually, uh, m mostly a, unrelated. The Oculus 2 just came out. The Oculus Quest oh. 2. And, um that is the that is the VR rig that you can use without a PC, oh. and we're ours is arriving tomorrow. So. Oh, nice! Whoa, really? Hope I have some cool 
apocalyptic stuff to play in VR during an apocalyptic real life world. That'd be fun. Yeah. Well, if you're in the neighborhood, you can come to our house and maybe get it on the porch before we find it. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but um one lucky listener this is a, just one more reason to listen to the post-apocalyptic media podcast i know you and i i would bet you have a, a porch camera so <laughs> i i think they'd get caught <laughs> for years i had a battery powered fake for porch camera oh that would beep. see motion and like yeah start blinking and moving around and it was all a farce um, you know, there was, there was no, no bite that behind funny. that bark. Um, okay. Steph, did you, did you confirm anything, Steph, on that? Uh, yes. It's an origin story reboot. Reboot. I knew the, the R word was used. Yes. Reboot was used. Origin story. They've cast almost all of the major leads and people are really excited about the cast. So who knew? I mean, I knew about the TV show, but didn't know about this until I heard about the cast. Give me two so. cast members that people will recognize. I mean, I don't know who people are going to recognize. Tom, Tom Hopper from uh, Umbrella Academy. The big dude? Yes. Oh, that, yeah, that's a big is. get. Yeah, Yeah, they've got a... I'm, I butcher people's names when I try to pronounce them. But Avon... Jogia from Zombieland Double Tap. Uh, Kaya, Kaya Scodelario from Maze Runner. Everyone can make fun of me for getting all of these names wrong. And um, Robbie Arnell from Upload. Neil McDonough, McDonough from Yellowstone. Sorry, everyone, for butchering your names. Wait, Neil McDonough. <laughs> was he in um, Car Altered Carbon? Yes. Yeah, he's a. He he's been in a lot of stuff. And yes. Band of Brothers, of course. <laughs> yeah, Band of Brothers. He's in one of my oh, yeah. favorite movies, uh, Dancer in the Dark. Uh, he played a uh, cop. It was a long time ago. It was probably 25 years ago. But yeah, Band of Brothers. He was great in that. Yeah, oh, he yeah, he killed it. He was really good. So yeah, they've got a good cast lined up. All right, so um, something to check out for everybody if you're a big Resident Evil fan and moving right along. Sean, what's your topic this week? My topic is it concerns the things that I'm writing that are no that are not on the site yet. Um, I have two big things I'm working on right now, and one of them is a it's kind of a, a top list of um, of iOS games, mobile games, and I I play a lot on my iPad and. You know, I, I don't have an iPhone, but the iPad, you know, pretty much same thing. And uh, and I, I've just been downloading a lot of these free ones, and I and they're all post-apocalyptic. And I figured, you know, it'd be cool to kind of put together a list. So I started with the ones I already played, and I figured I'm going to do a top ten. Well, mm -hmm. then um, then I started, you know, doing a little more research, and I started finding other ones that I hadn't played yet. And I said, I'm going to make this a top twenty. <laughs> And then Derek's like, well, don't don't forget about these. And I'm like, oh, I forgot about those. So now it's going to be a top 25. I'm, I'm cutting it off. <laughs> top 25. It's going to be. That's it. Uh, the ones toward the bottom of the list, you know, it's funny because I, I cut a lot. Of, there's, I would say there's probably 50-ish post-apocalyptic or survival games on the iOS store. Wow. Um, a lot of those, well, not a lot. A couple of those are not worth downloading. They're, you know, I, I tried them out. I tried out all the free ones, and then I tried out a couple of the 99-cent ones. Um, there's only one that I paid for that was $7.99, which is insane for me to do that for an iOS game. I mean, I'll buy a PC game for $7.99? $7 yeah, yeah, $7.99 for an iOS game. Okay. Uh, it, but it's, uh, it's based on a PC game. It's called Atom RPG. And that's the only reason I got it, because I've played it. Oh, yeah, we were before. talking about Adam RPG. Yeah, yeah. It's a good game. It's that one that we were talking about from uh, from Russia, and it's very uh, Fallout 1, Fallout 2, you know. Yeah. So I, uh, so I downloaded that one. It's a, it's a good alternative, um, you know, like a mobile art alternative to the PC game, so it's kind of cool. But So, yeah, really? I'm, I'm still writing that up, and it's going to be – I might surprise people with I, th I think my top top few because there are some some gems out there that I think a lot of people haven't really found. Well, for, so. first of all, you're telling me I can pull out my telephone 
and have a Fallout 1, Fallout 2 type experience wherever I am. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I not only you. the fact that there's, you know, Fallout Shelter, which is the, one of the games that you reminded me of. And I was like, oh, yeah, I love that game. Uh, <laughs> and, and I mean, that I played the heck out of that game. I actually had that on an old iPhone to where it didn't even work anymore. I think it was an iPhone 4? No, I think it was a 6. Like when it first came out, I couldn't, my phone couldn't handle it. And I actually upgraded my phone to play Fallout Shelter when it came out. Oh, <laughs> oh but, wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, but I really like that game. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a good one. And then, uh, but yeah, a couple of the other ones like Adam RPG, there's actually, I think, one or two others that are very similar to Fallout as well. Yeah, there's, oh. I mean, the technological <laughs> advancement is pretty impressive now for, for little mobile games. Yeah, yeah. I've, I mean, I've, I've played uh, like Age of Empires on mobile, yeah. and it, and it plays just like the original. It's amazing. Um, wow. Yeah. I'm gonna definitely have to check out that, that list now. Now, speaking of Fallout Shelter, I played a lot of that too, and I'm just curious. Did you ever try? There's like the, what is it? Hardcore mode or survival mode? It's the hardest mode yeah. you can do. Do you ever try yeah. that? Yeah, I think. When I played it, now I haven't played it in a while, but um, I remember they had that update, and I started playing it with the hardcore mode. Was that does that have to do with um, like food and drink, or how does how does that work? I I don't know what all it affected, but you basically like, man, it, it was it was intense. Rad roaches were would kill your people really quickly. Raiders would come and kill some people. Yeah. It was just very, very hard to survive. Um because I, I played the I played the junk out of that game. I I maxed out everything, started yeah. over with a new survival thing, and uh I knew what I was doing. So like we had a second generation, I named them all personally, you know, I was very attached, yeah. and then Raiders attacked and yeah. killed like two kids, <laughs> you know, two people that I'd <laughs> I'd known and I'd fostered them. And, um, you know, then rad roaches appeared and then raiders came again. And, uh, what I was left with was just like holding the dead bodies of all of my, uh, vault mates that oh I had gosh. raised and I like rage quit the game. I don't think I've come it's back to it horrible. since. Oh, <laughs> you've been emotionally scarred by fallout shelter. <laughs> it's a wow. harrowing, harrowing experience that, that game. And that is pretty much why it's going to be top on my list i think i i think it's a pretty good game but like i said i haven't played it for a few maybe two years i think maybe not even that long uh, so hmm. i need to jump back into it before i do this uh this write-up to see uh i have to get my iphone 4 and break it out <laughs> <laughs> um, iphone 4 wow yeah uh but the other thing the other topic i'm doing is uh one i'm very excited about so let me tell you the whole story about it. So get ready. Okay, so there's a, a guy who's a survivalist. His name is Michael Hawk. It's M Y K E L uh, Hawk, and he, I, I didn't recognize the name at first. He contacted me on Facebook, and he, after I wrote that article about uh, top survival TV shows for the mm -hmm. site, so he came back and he said, "Hey, if you want to check out a good reality survival show that um, that doesn't have a lot of fluff, check out." Uh, we did an episode of Man, Woman, Wild where we were in a like an urban environment and it was very post-apocalyptic. And I was like, oh, I love that show, Man, Woman, Wild. That's cool. Uh, but I never saw, I think there were two seasons and I think we only saw the first season, my wife, my wife and I. So I didn't really think much about it. I'm like, okay, person who's contacting me about this, that sounds great. Well, then I did, I looked the guy's name, uh, you know, I looked his name up and it was the guy who starred in Man... <laughs> woman wild it was the man of man woman wild oh wow wow so uh so i was a little i was like okay okay well um i'm gonna contact this guy and see if he wants to do an interview so i i messaged him back on facebook and i said yeah i would definitely uh i will definitely check out that show you recommended i'm already a fan but you know i'll check out that episode meanwhile do you want to do an uh, an interview and he was like yeah sure you know let's chat sometime so I sat down, I did some more research on him and other shows he's done. He, I can't even begin to tell you everything this guy's done. He, he's a, a military veteran. I think he was a captain 
when he retired. Uh, he's about 10 years older than me. And so he's, um, you know, kind of my generation and, and he, he's done so much. I can't, again, I can't even explain really everything he's done, but you know, he's done so many shows. His, uh, IMDB said he was in like 50, he's, he's been in 50 shows, but that's not Jeez. only starring in them, but helping out with survival advice and things like that. Wow. Uh, you know, that show daybreak on yeah. Netflix, Absolutely. he did, he gave them uh, survival advice for that show. He, he was hired really? on as a, as an advisor. Hmm. Um, and then he has his own reality shows. He not only men, uh, you know, man, woman, wild, he has a bunch of other ones that are, um, I can't think of them off the top of my head, but there's a one man survival, I think is one that he did. It, it's, it's a really, you know, it's, it's amazing how many things he's done, but he, he's a veteran of Afghanistan and he, according to his wiki page, it says he knows seven languages and he, he not only does he know them, he tested out of them in the army, you know, so he, he's like a master at, at seven languages. Dang. Um, and he wrote books and that books and books about survival, about languages. I mean, he wrote a book about how to learn languages quickly. The guy's just a hmm. genius. So I was excited to get to, you know, be able to sit down with him and chat. And, and so we, we did an interview. I recorded all the, uh, yeah, I wrote down all the answers and I'm going to write that up as a uh, as a an article and it's going to focus mostly on him I think because I find him so fascinating I maybe I have a little man crush I admit but he <laughs> but so and you know the the fact that all this stuff uh, I feel like when I talk you know when I'm doing this interview it's like I can't say enough about him you know in this so I'm going to write a, a little <laughs> bit about him tell a little bit about what he is what he's um kind of what he's been into his projects uh the movies and, and and shows that he's helped with you know that he's advised and then i ask him some questions and he'll answer those questions so you can look for that on the site it might be up before this podcast comes out but oh, nice. that sounds like a great article and a really interesting interview it's yeah. gonna be good it's gonna be really good yeah i it, it's amazing just talking to him. It's just, uh, <laughs> I'm a little starstruck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking forward to reading that. That's, you know, it's, uh, we are, we are definitely a community that is interested in survival and yeah. getting through. Here's a little tip that I picked up from a TV show recently. When in the apocalypse, you want to carry a bottle of alcohol, but in the, out in the bottle isn't alcohol. It's poison. Mm. And, uh, you know, you can label it not poison, you know, whatever you want to do. <laughs> totally but not poison. The, the idea is that if a crazy person robs you, then the first thing they're going to want to do is to down your alcohol. Hmm. Bing. Bada bing, bada boom. They there just drank go. poison and you win. Wow. Unless they killed Free you advice. first. And then you kind yeah, of then. win. But not. Uh, <laughs> you at least get the last. Get your revenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm. I'm sure this this survival is going to be a lot more practical than that. There's a lot more situations than just getting robbed by raiders that um, that, that we should be preparing for. That are probably yeah. A lot I mean more that likely. that that actually played into the interview too. You know, he's a real deal survivalist. I mean, this guy was in the military wow. for for all his life, and and so I asked him, you know. Like, like with Daybreak, you know, he gave these guys advice on how to survive like a zombie apocalypse. And I, I kind of asked him, you know, is that a silly thing? Like, you, you know, what, how do you feel about that when you're the real deal dude and you're <laughs> telling Matthew Broderick how to, you know, survive zombies? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I love zombie stuff, you know. And, and he, he told me all about um, kind of his favorite zombie movies and everything, too. So he's a really down earth guy. Really good. Oh, that's yeah. so neat. Uh, all right, Steph, what's your topic this week? Well, my topic this week is the incredibly inspiring topic of the latest updates on COVID-19. Uh, woo woo <laughs> Facebook <laughs> fact checkers, we need you here. <laughs> I know, this is probably going to get our podcast banned. Um, anyway, I had a different idea, but Derek stole it and it is his idea. Before, yes. <laughs> before you go any <laughs> further, let me intro this just a little bit because it is, um, it is one of them topics that, uh, that you've got to intro and you've got to, you got to know where your info is coming from. So, uh, I know Stephanie's a little humble. She's not going to toot her own horn 
as much as I would. So um, <laughs> you should know about Stephanie. Stephanie is, uh, she passed the bar exam. She became a lawyer. Our legal um, qualifications are in limbo right now. We're, uh, we're not practicing <laughs> yeah. attorneys. Let me j- yeah, just put it that way. Real. Yeah, not at the moment. But in addition to going to law school, Stephanie went to school for other things. Um, She got an undergraduate degree in journalism, top of her class at Texas A&M. I didn't um, know this. (laughs) (laughs) I don't talk about it. (laughs) And um, subsequently, actually before law school, she got her master's degree in science journalism. So uh, specializing in in technology, biology, uh, those kind of topics, I would say. I would is that accurate, Stephanie? It's a master of science in science and technology journalism. So um, yeah, I'd say that's all accurate. Okay. So uh, so su- subsequently, um, Stephanie has been working as a leading reporter for one of the internet's most traffic news sites, Heavy.com. And um, where she has covered COVID really from the start of this yeah, whole since thing. since January. And I've kept her... covering COVID. Since January, okay. And has been keeping her finger on the pulse. Um, you know, naturally there's, there's some value judgments when it comes to uh, risk reward. And, um, and those are up to each of us to understand and to evaluate. So uh, not going to... Um, not going to say anybody's opinion on that is is valid or invalid. Yeah, yeah, we're, we don't really get into that, into the political weeds, <laughs> like that here. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> All but right. Yeah, I've been. Oh, sorry. Go on. So to finish the to finish the intro, uh, you can at least trust we are a factual based. Uh, you got to be if you're in news, and so um, that's how we're going to keep it. Facebook fact checkers. <laughs> Yes. So (laughs) as Derek said, I've been covering this since January. Um, Yeah, like back when a lot of people didn't even really realize it was on the radar. I was watching the news about it when it was just in China, or so we thought. And it was starting to break out. And I mean, you know, some of y'all who were following it from back then remember those videos of people who are like passing out in the streets and stuff. And Everybody was wondering if it was real, and yeah, I mean, I was freaking out back then, and (laughs) I was like, is this going to be like the zombie apocalypse for real, because back then we weren't really sure what it was going to be, and it could have ended up being anything, and just as a a side note, um, some of y'all who are listening to this know what I'm talking about, about those videos of people who are passing out in the streets in China, and my theory is we learned later that um, when you're with COVID, when your oxygen levels get really low, um, you can still think you're fine. And they call it happy hypoxia. And it's this weird thing. With happy COVID. hypoxia? Yes. I, I was just <laughs> yes. making sure you didn't mispronounce the, like, nope. you were saying hypoxia. Okay. What is happy hypoxia? Happy hypoxia is this... Um, this weird thing that doctors have noticed with COVID-19, I, I don't know if other respiratory diseases might sometimes have this, but I think it's pretty rare. Um, basically, it's where you um, your blood oxygen level is low, but you don't realize it and you feel like you're fine until you aren't. But it's not like other illnesses where your blood oxygen level gets low and you realize it and you start getting worse and worse and worse. There's some cases, I don't know if it's every time, where they think they're fine. And so I really think that that's what was going on with those people passing out in the streets in those China videos that a lot of people thought were fake back then. I think it's just that we didn't know much about the virus at the time, and those were people who probably were trying to walk to the hospital or just felt like they weren't that bad, and then they were passing out. So... So that, all that just to say that I've been following this for a long time. And um, so every now and then, you know, for the podcast, not every week, but every now and then I'll drop in with some uh, coronavirus COVID-19 updates. Some I, lighthearted banter. Yeah, lighthearted banter. Um, just because, you know, we're sort of in a, 
pre-apocalyptic world, it feels like, very dystopian right now. And it's good to, you know, talk about that every now and then. So, for yeah, absolutely. Heavy, yeah. For Heavy, I've been um, doing these COVID-19 updates periodically since February. So there's just one article and I'm updating it sometimes every day. Sometimes I give it a few days break and I've been doing that for a while. And so um, I just updated it again today. And just two two interesting things um, worth worth noting. One is that you may have heard or are hearing now that Johnson and Johnson has paused its COVID nineteen vaccine trials. Possible that by the time you hear this podcast, they will be unpaused. I don't know, but it's worth noting that that does not that does not necessarily mean that the vaccine is going to be bad. Um, I know it's very easy in 2020 to immediately think the worst, as I often do, (laughs) because sometimes the worst happens this year. But um, 2020? No. (laughs) I know. Crazy, right? But um, but in this situation, it could um, it's really just showing that they're being very, very safe. You know, it's one person who had an illness. They haven't disclosed many details about it yet. One and person, they one shut person? down this the whole thing, huh? Yeah, because they don't know they have they don't know what the cause of the illness was, and they haven't released many details about it. Maybe but, it yeah, was like the paused. first person, They're like ah, oh, injecting acid. <laughs> well, they they said that it was uh, like an un unexplained illness or something. Yeah, like that's all they Z said or something. I mean, like it could be that they're a zombie now. You know, yeah, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like, shut it down. Yeah. Um, hopefully it was just that they, you know, got sick from something else, food poisoning or something. I don't know. And, and that's what's going to, and they're going to resume the vaccine trials. Or they could be a zombie. It's 2020. Anything is possible. So anyway. Um, the just, entire drug just, is just bath salts. And like, Let's try oh bath gosh. salts and see if that works. Oh my gosh. Bath salts. Yeah, we had some crazy stories of people sounding like they were literally turning into zombies in 2019 from bath mm. salts. So that was, was that, that was 2019. Me, I think so. Feels like eight years ago. I mean, I think it was 2019. I could be wrong though. Don't. I know yeah. there was that guy. I think he's in Miami where he was on bath salts and he ate a guy's face off or something. That was a couple yes. of years ago. I remember that one. Yeah, that was insane. That was the dude who like. He would. He had just been having like dinner with his family, and he left early and was walking home and like went crazy from bath salts and ended up eating someone's face. So that was special. Yeah, went out for a yeah. little dessert. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, all that to say that the vaccine trials it just means they're being super safe. So you know, don't don't go full zombie in your concerns yet, guys. Okay. Um. Then the other thing, which I don't know what to make of it, we'll find out more soon, is the um, a new uh, Lancet Journal uh, study published. Um, Do we trust peer- Lancet? Yes. Okay. Peer Just peer quest. reviewed, Just peer reviewed, and um, they reported that um, is. I, I'm like losing my train of thought here, but they they reported that he is, that a 25 year old in Nevada is a confirmed case of reinfection for coronavirus. There's actually a few others in the U S. Um, I think even in that study, there may have been a 60 year old. Um, there are a few other cases in the U S. that you know they haven't been like in peer reviewed studies confirmed, but. This is a 25-year-old, no known health problems or immune deficits, and he had it, um, he first got it in April, then he tested negative twice in May after recovering, then developed symptoms again May 28th, and tested positive on June 5th. And they confirmed uh, through studying both strains that these were two different strains and not the same strain having gone dormant and coming back. So, um, in his case, it was worse the second time, and he had to be hospitalized. There are about 23 cases worldwide, in, um, including some in the U.S., of possible reinfections. Now, take in mind, that's out of, like, 
37 million worldwide cases, you know, so it's a small number. But there are some cases of reinfection. Not all of them are worse. I know that some of it, some of this is going around that if you get reinfected, it's definitely worse, but some of these reinfections were not worse. So that's worth noting. Um, hmm. One woman in the Netherlands who was fighting a very rare cancer, and she was 89, died after her second reinfection. But that is not the case every time. So She was 89, looking, and she got reinfected again? She got it twice. <laughs> yeah. It's oh. so sad, right? Wow. She was she was, she was fighting a rare cancer, so, I mean, they didn't oh. say where she caught it, but I'm going to guess probably going to the hospital for treatments, right? Yeah. Yeah. so yeah. sad but um but yeah so that it was interesting i read this reddit article i mean this reddit discussion about that news and there were a bunch of people in there who were saying oh yeah my my mom caught it twice you know she tested positive early and then positive again later and you know do you trust anonymous people on reddit i don't know you you decide for yourself. Only with my medical decisions. Only you're, with medical decisions. Yeah, your exactly. degrees mean nothing uh, compared to the Reddit people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't compare to 10,000 yeah. upvotes. That's, Sorry. that's right? a lot of karma. Seriously. I got to trust. Seriously. Go with the karma. <laughs> so, so that's like the new thing to watch for. You know, like um, I've heard some people say that it may not affect the vaccines, especially the vaccines that are focusing on the... Uh, the spike in the virus because that's present in all the strains. So this doesn't necessarily mean that a vaccine isn't going to work. Um, but it's just worth kind of keeping an eye on. Like some people are wondering if, you know, there's a new strain that's very similar out now that's more contagious than the one in the early months. And so are the people who caught it in the early months going to get sick twice because of the new strain? Hmm. hmm. Okay. It's, let, it's there's a lot to learn. Let me ask you. This 25 year old that got reinfected. Yeah. Why? Uh, remind me again. Why is this unique? Why is this different from the other people that supposedly? Um. Did? It was just confirmed in a peer reviewed article in a medical journal. Got it. In a so, medical journal um, that Bill Gates owns. <laughs> No. <laughs> was it Dr. Bill Gates who <laughs> initially Dr. diagnosed? Dr. Gil Bates is his name. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, it is a, okay. a peer-reviewed journal. It, it I have is, to ask. <laughs> it has been confirmed. So, yes. Um, in a very, But just, it's worth noting, there's been about 23 cases out of, like I said earlier, 37 million cases that we know of. Um, or more worldwide. So it's a very, very tiny chance at this point, you know, but, but just, just something worth keeping an eye on my happy updates for our podcast. 34 million. Wow. That is a, some, that is yeah, a big conspiracy. Like yeah. 38 I'm million kidding YouTube. <laughs> oh my gosh. They're going to hear the word conspiracy and yeah. just be like, it is not a conspiracy. 38 million cases global, eight, almost 8 million in the U.S. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of asymptomatic cases, so it's probably a lot higher than that in reality. All right. So, well, thank you for You're welcome. getting us. Sean, Sean, do you have anything to add before we move on? Uh, no. You know, it, it's such dangerous ground talking about this. And, and it, it's kind of sad that it is. It's just yeah. so it's been politicized to death. And... Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I share thoughts with both sides, I think. So I'm not, you know, 100% on, you know, yeah. either side. So, yeah, that's the most dangerous place to be really is to be an open-minded, like yeah, nuanced yeah. person, because then you don't have a gang <laughs> at your back, you know? To... Well, I can definitely relate to that. I mean, you know, I have to report objectively and share both sides of things, which also means like, I'll get a lot of hate mail from both sides too. And, and that's always fun. <laughs> All right, I can hear I can hear people clicking unsubscribe from here. Oh no! So, <laughs> so before we lose any more of our post-apocalyptic uh, we're fans, we're not really talking. Yeah, I'm not talking about COVID frequently, guys. This is just every now and then. So if you don't <laughs> like it, just know it's not going to be a weekly thing. <laughs> yeah, and we'll. Uh, 
I'm just going to leave it right, right there. And we're going to move Perfect. on to our third and final topic, which is going to be real short. It's just, that's it's, fun. it's going to be an fun. experience report. Now that's something I want to introduce here because we've been to some fun zombie related, uh, end of the world stuff. You know, Sean's told us a little bit about his time at Dragon Con and, uh, and some other, other things. Uh, Stephanie and I have gone to a paintball event where we shot paintballs at people who acted like zombies from the back of a truck that was driving around a field. That was fun. We shot, uh, pellets at people who were acting like zombies in a warehouse in Austin. That was fun. But that's not what this is about. This is a report of a battle royale laser tag experience that Stephanie and I had l this last Friday in what I think is one of its kind. I don't know that for sure, but um, but it I, I couldn't find anything like it. I play a lot of battle royales. Uh, I've played, you know, all of the main ones. You think of it, I've probably played it if you've played it, unless it's obscure. And that's just a really fun thing for me to do. And in every instance, I pretend that it's that I'm Katniss from the Hunger Games. <laughs> that is that is always the plot of a battle royale. If if I'm the one playing it, is uh, you know just got to survive to the end, make it, and uh, and then I get to be a tribute or whatever. The no, you are the tribute. What do you what do they call them if they're the winners? It's been a long time since I read Hunger Games. Did y'all read Hunger Games? No. Yes. I do not remember, though. Okay. All right. Well. Um, they called them the winner. So anyways, we went and did this. They have these. You put on um, you put on these sensors on your head, and there's sensors on your gun, and that's where people have to shoot to kill you. And then um, there was these little boxes all over the field, and you can you can go and treat them like loot boxes. You know, in a battle royale, half of the fun of a battle royale is just um, – is just shopping. You're like, you, you ever watch those shows? When I was a little kid, before I ever bought groceries or had any thought of buying groceries, I watched a show where people went and like grabbed gro groceries for their shopping cart and got them for free. And that was entertaining to me just because it's like What's free stuff. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> there was also a video game <laughs> show where you, you like, put video games on your Velcro shirt or something. And, and uh, that, yeah. that always thrilled me. So, so anyways, battle Royals like that, you start out the game, you run around, you just like, there's guns everywhere and in equipment and you're just like loading up. So that's what this did. Um, kind of, kind of. And so it's a mixed review. I'd say on this battle Royale experience, it's in on the outskirts of Austin. It's called battleground ranch. And it's brand new. We actually went on opening day, trying to support some local businesses, uh, especially in 2020. That's really important, yeah. by the way. Uh, order out, guys, and uh, and support your local businesses. But um, we went out there, and the first thing that became really apparent is that um, I am not in the kind of shape that Katniss Everdeen is. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the, just... Golly, the game starts and you do a little bit of running and then, you know, and then it's like, oh, my God, I just spent my one sprint for the whole game, you know, on that, on getting to the, you know, getting to cover. So um, we, yeah, Stephanie and I, we were really tired uh, and running slowly is, is not a good recipe for success when you need to get to cover. Sure. So, uh, so, you know, we, we didn't win. Neither of us won, but I think I, I killed a lot of people by sneaking up on them and shooting them in the bat, back, basically, is the only <laughs> way that I got any kills. But uh, it was fun. It was outdoors. It was kind of small. It was like four acres-ish. Yeah, yeah, four to five. Four to five acres. Okay, yeah. Not so, bad. It was pretty big, pretty nice size, you know. Yeah, we had like ten people out there. And, uh, the equipment was fun. I found, I found a loot box finally, and I got some, got a grenade launcher out of it. And it basically, you have this gun that's programmable and, um, it, the gun itself knows which gun it is, I guess you could say. So you pick up a grenade launcher and your gun like, uh, adds those stats to how it works. So all of a sudden I lost a lot of range 
from from my gun when I went to my grenade launcher, but the damage went way up. Um, these guns are so advanced that they have, you know, they have a little scope on them, and there's a dot in the middle of the scope that you know, of course, shows you where you're aiming. When you're shooting, in order to um, simulate recoil, because a real weapon is going to bump you and you're going to get off your target, uh, unless you're Superman, really mm -hmm. good at it, staying on target, um, they, they simulate that by making the reticle disappear on your gun for a second or two seconds sometimes, depending on um, what kind of gun you're, you're wielding. So there was, there was some really cool aspects to, to this game. But um, hmm. my, my overall review, you know, the, the loot boxes stayed in one spot. And I think that that was my biggest frustration with this game type is that everybody went to a loot box at the very beginning, yeah. you know? And if you yeah. didn't, then you were really screwed because everybody else had better weapons and health packs and all sorts of stuff that was coming out of these loot boxes. Sure. So what, what I think they need to do is they, they need to, like, take these little the loot boxes and put them on RC cars or something and have them drive around the battlefield randomly <laughs> between That's a matches. That's great idea. Yeah. They also had the guns were equipped to let you know, like, cause the, it, like a battle Royale, it shrinks and you know, people get shot and then there's a small number of people at the end, but the gun lets you know if you're out of range. So that was cool. It, it yells it. So other people kind of get an idea of where you might be, but yeah, it'll say out of range, out of range. And, and so um, that was kind of cool. And you try to run in and figure out how to get back into range. And they'll tell you if you're out of ammo, which happened to me hmm. a couple times. It's uh, I really liked it. Um, you know, I'm one of those people who's more into, you know, social distancing right now. And um, I thought this was a great like if you're a cautious person like that, this is great, in my opinion, because it's outdoors You've got, you know, in our group, we had like eight people in this five acre area. It was, it was great. So, um, really fun thing to do in a 2020 world. And, um, you know, I, I took out Derek once. I just feel like that's very important to say that Derek had a rocket launcher weapon and I was hiding because I am not, I, I also learned I'm in bad shape. So I started finding a space to hide <laughs> in each game. And the first time, my first hiding space, Derek found me. I was trying to get a rocket launcher at me, and I managed to take him out before he could take me out. Of course, he yeah, got she had me better back. Range. He got me back in the next round because he real, he knows me, and he knew I was hiding. Because you're such space. a camper. <laughs> I just camped in that I one spot. I hid in the same place Plug. again, and he found me and took me out. So... <laughs> You know. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a good workout. We're going to go back, I think. We're going to try to do it more so that um, we can get to where we can sprint twice instead of sprinting once. <laughs> just once. And, um, <laughs> and see where we can go from there. So, you know, to and, and to be fair, you know, that, that, that can be on uneven ground. It can wear you out. And um, we were by far the oldest people there. I don't think anybody else was over 25. Yeah. And uh, one of the guys... Um, got so worn out that he uh, threw up repeatedly uh, on the walk back to the to the base. So, wow. Yeah, very dehydrated. It's good training, you know. If you're out of shape uh, like us, I think you know it's going to be motivating. I was out. I did a run today. Uh, it wasn't a it wasn't an impressive run, but it it was a run <laughs> I wouldn't have done if I didn't think I need to speed up so that I can shoot people with the, those. <laughs> You know, yep. lasers. So, uh, so yeah, if you're ever out in, in the Austin area, Battleground Ranch, I think, is the name. Lots it might fun. be Battlefield Ranch. I think it's Battleground. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, tell them, tell them post-apocalyptic media sent you, and they'll be like... <laughs> who are they? What's that? <laughs> it's <laughs> not the guy who threw up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I... I Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Well, I, I remember when I uh, when I was younger, we used to play uh, laser tag, and I don't imagine it was probably the same equipment. We had the guns with the the wire connected to the big battery backpack. I, I imagine you probably didn't have that. 
this was just a gun connected to a sensor. We didn't have to have a big backpack. So everything was bit. in the gun. Oh, yeah. Okay. At one point, my gun started making a noise, and I looked at it, and there was like a computer fan on the side <laughs> oh. of the gun, and it had whirred <laughs> up. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> to cool it down. By the way, it is called Battleground Ranch. I just looked it up. So, um, oh, and the cool thing too, you have sensors that you wear with headbands, and they give you a brand new headband. You're not like using someone else's germy headband. I mean, they're very big on health they're very health conscious they sanitize the guns between each game i mean it's it's really cool that's good all right well um that is that's it for this week i want to thank you all for joining us and uh please like subscribe comment hey your comments are really important to us uh we're, we're gonna read them and it could also really help us to to gain exposure. So if you are predisposed at all to making a comment about this show, please feel free to do that. And from us at Post Apocalyptic Media, thanks. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.